you'll see that this uh, particular video is labeled as an extra. And what do I mean by that? Um, extras are videos that don't directly connect to the main content of the class. It's not really essential to, to understand what's about to happen, uh, to understand how to program with Scratch. Instead, things that are labeled extras are really there as sort of here are hints about using Scratch, hints about making things happen in Scratch that your students are going to want to know how to do or that you're going to want to know how to do. And so in particular, let's look at uh, just a couple of, of hints and extras about working with uh, the, the blocks in, the, in, the, in a program in this extra. And in particular, so I've got this little program right now that works about the way I want it to work, right? I have this idea, I ended my last video with the idea of places everybody, send the, the scratchy cat to the middle of the stage and have him point up and then one, wait, wait one second and then the actual program, the action was turn 55 degrees to the left counterclockwise and move 200 steps. So I say places everybody and action and he jumps to his place, right? And and you'll notice a couple, I do, I've done a couple of things in these videos that I should explain or draw your attention to. First is that when I'm working with Scratch and I'm kind of exploring, I oftentimes take a, a block and just put it off to the side for a few minutes because I'm not sure whether I'm going to want to use it or not. Okay, so I don't always throw things away, and you'll notice then that, I, that it's easy to sort of reconnect things, move stuff around, and, and so I, I haven't really drawn your attention to this, but you know, as I move a block around, I can grab a block of code by moving my cursor over the block. When a cursor goes over the block, I get that open-handed icon, and with a PC at least, with a Windows machine, when I click on that block and I'm holding my cursor right now or holding my mouse button the cursor changes to a closed hand I've grabbed a hold of it and now as I move it around as I get close to other blocks if it can you know join with other blocks you'll see that dark shadow up here that says if I release the cursor right now what's gonna happen well when I release this cursor those are gonna join together, right? And it will happen not only at the top and the bottom, but actually also in the middle, right? If I, if I hold it kind of right over to the left edges, you'll see that, that it will let me insert code as I go. And so I could say, cool, I want to put it there. And I can enter that block, those, those, those two blocks inside of the other three blocks. And so that's how we kind of select and move stuff. But occasionally when you do that, you're going to make, make a mistake. Suppose I didn't want that to go after the first block. I after want, well, actually want to go after the second block. And so how do I separate these blocks? And again, I have actually done this in a couple of videos. I just haven't really drawn your attention to it. The idea is that when I grab a block and I pull on it, I not only grab that block, but I grab everything that comes uh, below it. And, and this is really not that nonsensical. I mean, it's really just exactly like that metaphor I've talked about, about the fact that think about these as a stack of Lego bricks, right? If I had five Lego bricks joined together in a little tower, right? That's what every kid does when they first build with Legos. They just build towers with it. And if I wanted to grab a Lego brick in the middle of that tower, when I pull on it, I don't just magically pull that one brick out. I pull that one brick and all of the bricks that are, are joined on top of it. Well, okay, in Scratch, it's all the the bricks that are joined below it, uh, although from the Lego metaphor, the, the bumps and, and, and notches sort of still works the same way. And so I can grab that notch and I can grab and separate a whole block of code. Well, if I wanted to get rid of, you know, I suppose I, I put these in the wrong spot, I could, I could, you know, separate these out, grab those two, separate these out, right? And I can move things around any way that I want as I'm working with these blocks, right? So just keep that in mind that when you grab a block, you, you tend to grab not only that block, but all the blocks that come after it. Okay, so that's one of the things about kind of selecting and inserting and leading us to deleting. Suppose I wanted to delete 
this code now. Suppose I finally have my program the way I want it, right? I have places everybody in action, perfect, and this is all stuff that I was playing with, but it's no longer part of my program. It's no longer part of my script. I want to delete it. Well, there's two things I can do. The first is I can simply hover over a block and I can right click on it on a PC and I get a little pop-up menu. Again, I think you have to use uh, an, a, the uh, Apple symbol option with the, the Macs, but you get this little pop-up and I can just say I want to delete that block and it goes away, right? Delete the block, goes away. Um, Actually, that's the probably the, the way that Scratch would originally intend you to do it, but most of us are going to learn this slightly simpler uh, way of doing it, which is if you grab a block and you just pull it way over here to the left edge where it's back into the menu and you let it go, you're throwing it away. And in particular, where this works well is when you have large segments of code. If I want to throw this whole thing away, just throw the whole thing away and off it goes. And now all I have left is my program, exactly the blocks I'm using. Okay. The final tip and hint that I really want to bring your attention to is that right now you'll notice that up here in the upper right hand corner it says save now. Scratch is kind of funny in that it falls somewhere between um, Microsoft Word and Google Docs. Right? With Microsoft Word nothing ever saves until you tell it to save. With Google Docs, you can make a change and it is immediately saved. Scratch falls somewhere in between. Every once in a while, Scratch will save to be nice to you, but it's not very dependable on when that happens. And I've seen students do this. They finally get their program perfectly working the way they want, and they come right up here and they click out, and the program is, is just not saved the way they want it. In fact, let me do that right now. It, it even tells me that you may not have, that your changes may not be saved, right? Like Microsoft would do. And so what you want to do is you want to come up here to File, and you just want to do Save Now, right? You don't have to do any naming because the name is, is this program title that you gave it right here. But notice when I did that now, the Save Now link goes away. Just get in the habit of, and, and as hard as this is, because it feels more like Google Docs than Microsoft Word, think about this like Microsoft Word. You always want to explicitly save just to be safe when you're working with your programs.